Hey everybody, what's up? Chuck here. You know the drill. Power Addicts, YouTube, FixJeeps.com. 2000 mile TJ. First TJ I've had on the channel, so it's a treat for you guys. What we got going on, those end links on this thing are rattling like crazy. End links mean the front sway bar. You've got a uh, metal bar that connects your front suspension up to your sway bar. Those links wear out. They got like a little pivot balls inside of them, which you'll see here in just a little bit. When they start rattling, you'll chase, you can be chasing things everywhere trying to figure out where the problem is. So, eh, enough of the gabbing. We'll just get to work and show you how it's done. Okay, your end links are going to be located as such. Obviously, staring at the front of the Jeep. There's the pretty one over there, the red one that's mine. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, you, you can take your wheels off, totally not necessary. Turn your tire outward, come down. Here's your sway bar, here's where it ties to your front axle, and here is the end link. These things right here, you can see this right here is set, totally separated. See it? And we've got one side of our disconnected right now. And the way we found it, there's a lot of rattling going on down the road, kind of figure out where it was, couldn't figure out where it's coming from. So stood up on the bumper right here, jumped up and down on it, it heard thump, thump, thump. And one person jumping on it, the other person eyeballing. We figured out that this thing is separated. So these, this right here, is what we're changing out today. And the tools you will need to perform this operation is T55 Torx for this side, and you will need it because this button, so here's a bolt that passes all the way through. It'll rotate, spin on you. It is a 18 millimeter on this side, and the nut up here is a 16, yes, 16 millimeter. As you see, we've already kind of pretty much got it disassembled. Show you guys a neat trick here in a minute, at a moment when we get the, I'll go ahead and pull this right here off. You see that, okay, we got that one loose. Go ahead and take that on off and loose, now that it was off. And then down here, we're gonna spin this one off. And this boat slides out like that. And it falls out and hits you in the head if you ain't under it. All right, now here's the trick. That, do, 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 do. if you look real close on these end links, this seat right here is tapered. It presses itself up inside this. So what you end up having to do, best thing you can do for yourself, take them loose here, that side of where it's already broke, take your sway bar and rotate it downward. He's gonna unhook his side over there. Rotate it downward like this. Okay, you see how it's tilting straight down? Your end link is still going to be stuck in here like this. Now you can get you a, what they kind of call a pickle fork or the, uh, well these for ball joints what they're really used for. It's kind of got the fork like this that you would drive in between this to separate them. That's one option. The other option is get down to where you get to it and a BFH and beat the F out of it. So. That's what we really did. We took this kitchen back right there and it popped that sucker right out of there. So now we got that one out. Let's go to the other side and I'll show you what's going on there. Alright, we got the sway bar pointing down like I showed you just a moment ago. And here's what we got. This is supposed to be up inside that end link. It totally separated, making all that rack, racket and rattling. See, that's kind of sort of what it's supposed to look like without the busted boot. So now we're going to get a socket. We're going to take that nut off right on the end. Yeah. See how they're pivots and... And that was actually... This don't feel too bad. It's got plenty of resistance left to it. But the boot was going to give it on a borrowed time. This didn't feel too bad. It took quite a bit of resistance on it. But when they look like that, you got problems. After you get that nut off right there, take your BFH. Get on the back side of it. And okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I kind of had it pretty loose, but you, you got the point. Hit the back end up right there. It may come out easy, it may not. That one actually did come out a little easier because, well, I just want to demonstrate right there. It's already had it loose. The other side, we beat up out of that one. And it finally came out. So now we put the new ones in. Okay, we're on the driver's side right now. And notice how these end links turn. They are bent, and know from the fact that they're bent. 
you want to position when you put them in. This is where your uh, sway bar is going to connect here. Of course, it's on your axle. They tilt inward. They come up to the inside. Let's go get a better of a shot here. So that's where you need to be positioned. But the thing of it is, if you want to get that backwards down here, I don't think it is going to cause yourself a headache and a little more extra work because the sway bar will not go back on. So just to save yourself a little bit of a headache, be sure you put them in position the right, uh, correctly the first time. All right, got the bolt loosened up. You see how it drops down. Loosen this side up. Pull the washer, and this bolt pulls like that. Now we're going to put the new ones in. For all you dental people out here, that is known as a dry socket. That's where that pivot ball, where the heck it landed at. That's where that pivot ball is supposed to be sitting, sitting down inside there. And well, obviously you see it's not. Yeah, there it is. It sits down inside there. And it's supposed to do the pivot back and forth to allow the sway bar to do his flexi. Quick pointer here for you also. Again, look at the very end of these end links right here. Notice it's got like a hex key up inside there. Uh, I used a 316 to uh, size that up, so we're going to assume that it is a 316. See if it's in it real well. Now, what is that for? Good question. Let's just say that you've got this up inside the end bar, the sway bar, and you're trying to tighten it up, but this is turning, which is very subject to happen. So what you do is you get, put your uh, 3 sixteenths inside there and get your wrench to come in on top of it and tighten it up that way. Of course, you'll have it in your sway bar, but there, there, being there, you got no way of getting a wrench into it down here, that is your solution. Put your 3 sixteenths hex key in the top of that to tighten it up with. So there you go. Okay, now that we got this stuck up inside here, notice positioning here. Sway bar end link comes this way tapers back this way because it's going to meet here because you want to make sure it's coming out to meet the side of this as i mentioned earlier so then what your next point is taper seat you press it up inside the end uh, sway bar here run your nut on you. you're going to take your 16 millimeter while pressing in here crank it down and tighten it if you get lucky enough, honestly, it'll run all the way up and you'll seat that uh, taper seat by just this. But if it doesn't, what happens sometimes, this thing right here will start spinning inside this right here. So your next option is 3 16th bit, goes up inside here. Then you take your wrench and you crank and tighten it. Just six, your bit here, you can use a regular, you no, know, like 90 degree style Allen wrenches. Then you take your uh, wrench and just simply tighten the nut up. And once you get this seated up inside the uh, sway bar, once you get good and seated, then you take your uh, ratchet or good long wrench, just crank it baby down there and see it real well. See, that's how you do it. He's such a good helper. <laughs> All right, everybody, check it out. Now you got both of your links on, we're going to take the bar and rotate it upward. Until you get your bolts lined up. And my bolt is up here. Rotate this up. And run your bolt through. There's that one. And he's going to get to the other side, then you put your nut and your washer back on. Okay, we have them all reinstalled here. And just one quick pointer for you. Nothing is supposed to ever loosen back up when you tighten these up. That's famous last words. Um, give yourself about 50 miles or so, 50, 100 miles, whatever. Come back and check everything. Be sure it's good and tight. And so there you are, people. It's not very hard to change them babies out. So just in case your Jeep's going down the road, it's got the sways real bad. Now, I know a lot of four-wheel drive enthusiasts who go out rock crawling and things like that, they'll disconnect those, and that's fine for when you're out crawling. Going down the highway, it's not so fun because it has a tendency to want to shimmy and float and do all kinds of not-so-safe things. 
So change those in bar in the uh, links and maybe one day I'll show you guys a video how to convert those to where you can disconnect them. They call them the quick discos. I may give you guys a video on how to make those sometime. What do you think? Comment below if you want to see it. Okay, so we got these uh, end links changed out. So if you like my video, thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Go to www.fixjeeps.com. Check it out. These videos land there, plus lots of other great information. So go check it out. Subscribe. Comment. Give me that thumbs up. Everyone, peace out. Later, y'all.